What screams I'm emotionally unstable? Hey, can you pick up some eggs on your way home? Sure. Do you need anything else? Why are you asking? Well, if I'm stopping for eggs anyway, I may as well get other groceries while I'm at it. If it's such a big deal, don't bother. What? No, it isn't a big deal. I can happily get you eggs, I just you know what? Forget it, I don't even want them anymore. Okay, sorry. Oh, so, it's just that easy for you? What? Were you just looking for an excuse to avoid getting eggs? I don't. Understand why would you even say yes in the first place if you were just going to take it back? Look, I'm sorry, I must have misunderstood. I'll absolutely get the eggs for you. Were you even listening? I said that I don't want them anymore. Well, good. There are too many eggshells around here right now. Q explosion, TLDR, starting fights over nothing, about nothing, for no apparent reason. Posting inspirational quotes on Facebook multiple times a day. They cry when they realize they bought overly expensive lumber. Source, it was me. Arguing with retail clerks. When someone fires back 100x worse when playfully being made fun of. Stupid, example, you're wearing that out? Maybe if you wore clothes like this your ex wouldn't have cheated on you. Them, the shrimp store called, they're running out of shrimp. Me, I had sex with your wife. I have a friend on Facebook who is constantly switching, getting fired from, jobs and saying things like, so glad to be rid of that negativity in my life. She started dating a dude then two months later they were engaged. They bought a house a month later. Then, lo and behold, six months into the relationship they split and she's posting about, checking the negativity in her life. If drama follows you everywhere try looking in the mirror, that's the source of your drama. Causing a scene in public, yelling and cursing loudly, when you and your partner aren't getting along. I hate drama. Don't believe what people say about me and a good example for guys hey. You're so beautiful doesn't reply frick you bitch all women are the same both genders have their awful examples. I went out to dinner with my husband, boyfriend at the time, and our friend from high school. He brought his, now wife, with, who we hadn't met yet. We get our checks and the waitress wrote thanks so much. With a little heart and a smiley face on our receipts. Friend so snatches the receipt out of our friend's hand and tears it up. There's lots more fun stories about her. Edit, adding more stories guys. The ones I can think of at the moment, we'll call our friend Jay and his wife T, 1. Whenever they were in public and Jay even glanced in another girl's direction, T would pick a fight with him. 2. Again, if they were in public. If a girl was looking at Jay, T would grab Jay and kiss him or be overly affectionate. Which in turn would cause another fight because it made Jay super uncomfortable. 3. My husband and I, Jay. And some other friends were doing a group activity together last summer and T couldn't come because of work. We were out for about 4ish hours and T was texting Jay every 20 to 30 minutes the entire time. Apparently she does that all the time, even when Jay is at work. My husband and Jay work together at two different jobs and my husband can confirm that she does it consistently, asking where he is, what he's doing, when he's coming home etc. 4. My husband and I went over to their apartment to help them move. Instead of keeping busy and taking stuff out to the trucks slash trailer, T was standing around making sure I at no point, was left alone in the apartment with J. Like if he and I were left alone for 5 minutes, we were gonna frick and get away with it. 5. My husband and Jay are the kind of friends that make fun of and annoy each other. They're like siblings that have a love slash hate relationship. If my husband and Jay are messing with one another, over FB messenger for example, 
T will take the computer or phone from J and tell my husband he needs to stop talking to J. 6. T got pregnant last summer and they announced it on FB when she was barely 8 weeks along. Two weeks later they found out the baby had no heartbeat. Shortly after, she posted on FB basically saying that one of her co-workers who was also pregnant, was being disrespectful by talking about her pregnancy and being happy about it. Because T had lost hers, the co-worker wasn't allowed to be happy about her own pregnancy. Anyone who lives their life with no capacity to inhabit the middle ground. Everything is super chill, until it suddenly isn't and then it's the worst thing ever, without exception. Someone writes your name wrong on your coffee cup, and your whole day is ruined. Someone cuts you off in traffic and the world might as well end. If someone isn't completely and 100% with you, they're the enemy and must be completely destroyed. The bigger issue is that living your life at an 11 means that you don't have room for things that should be illegitimately angering. How do you muster up sadness about getting cheated on or political injustice or finding out that a family member has cancer if you've already completely blown your top over the fact that the pizza delivery place got your order a little bit wrong? Never being single because they're constantly dating somebody. Screaming you will rue this day to the mailman every day. Screaming you will rue this day to the sous chef every day. Having a dick measuring contest about whose nuclear launch button is bigger. Regularly getting blackout drunk or abusing other substances. Constant negativity about most situations therein. Rudeness becomes more and more expected. Searching for and so with the primary motivation of the so making them happy. Edit, just to clarify my broad points a bit. First, just because what I said sounds like you doesn't mean you're emotionally unstable. Don't let some stranger on the internet without the qualifications to do so decide your emotional state. If I helped you notice something about yourself, be honest with yourself and work to improve. But also apply your own context and evaluate yourself accordingly. When I say regularly getting blackout drunk, many of you didn't see regularly and are saying that's perfectly okay. After your college years and maybe even in during your later college years, you know your limits fairly well. Getting blackout drunk becomes a choice more often than not, it still happens occasionally though, and the hangovers get worse and worse, and if you're making that choice with regularity, at least weekly, there's a good chance there's something you're dealing with in an unhealthy way. The rudeness aspect is more of a personality change. Kinda starts as one-offs that sound like jokes for a while, then they become more and more frequent. You start to notice they're just being rude when other people say things that push their buttons. The so part is more of searching for and so as a cure for their unhappiness. Could you imagine getting involved with someone who seemed nice at first, but then you realize they're holding their happiness over your head? Most people don't want that pressure. And yes, this comes from several observations of very close friends suffering from depression. Myself included, for an almost three year period in time. Posting stupid faux alpha stuff on social media all the time. Hashtag boss babe. Hashtag alpha crew inability to take a bit of joking at your expense, especially if it's a common activity for the group. Constantly needing to be a victim, even over others. Their friend or family member is sick? Suddenly they're not feeling well. Bad day at work? theirs was worse. Edit, expanding on point two, this is more about people who are fine making fun of others, but extremely defensive about getting made fun of. Or, if you're in a group that jokes around all the time, that one person that takes the jokes more personally than the others. I don't advocate bullying. I do advocate letting the people you're friends with know that you appreciate them and care about them right alongside the joking, though. I suppose it was a bit of a blanket statement. Having to tell people you're emotionally stable. Uh, you forgot to mention I'm a genius. Posting I've had it or enough of the games or you know who you are on Facebook. I have plenty of high school friends who do this. I keep up with them because I legitimately care about them. But as I have told my daughter, if everyone around you is an a-hole, they aren't the a-holes. 
calling everyone your best friend, not only is it emotional unstable it's insincere and means nothing after you have 60 best friends. My two year old calls everybody her best friend, we are working on emotional stability. Honestly, it's time to cut her out of your life. Lawyer up, delete Facebook, hit the gym. Punching walls. Me as I cry in the shower. Being quick to judge others. They're probably trying to take their own insecurities and redirect them at others.